Hello everyone, my name is Phoenix. I'm the legal advisor for Exceed the Bar. We are a company who specialize in legal advisory or providing legal advisory and business psychology services. Uh, one of the services that we offer is to tutor law students and uh, to guide them through the various LLB modules. Um, we groom people for careers in law uh, and we also offer legal recruitment, uh, law recruitment to place candidate legal practitioners, uh, that is, uh, you know, pupils, candidate attorneys, um, in suitable positions. Our content is supplementary and complementary to all university uh, LLB degree modules. The preamble to the Constitution of South Africa lays out uh, several of our country's visions, but amongst these uh, visions is the imperative to free the potential of each and every person in this country. Uh, we recognize the potential of every person and we want every law student in particular to do well in their careers. Uh, to this end, we will seek to sharpen your legal prowess, your knowledge, your skills, and to guide you through your studies to a full uh, in-depth understanding of law. We will also help iron out any problematic subject areas that you may encounter. Uh, our offering includes practical visual skills and things that you may not be taught at law school or university. Our materials are loaded with tips and efficient ways of processing things in law. As part of our post-study services, we endeavor to offer law firms and their principals with best matched uh, students readily chiseled for their articles or pupillage and to place students on a solid footing to a career in law. You can browse our website at www.exceedthebar.com. Uh, our contact details are included at the end of this particular workshop. Thank you for joining us. Right, on to mastering case law. One of the most vital things any legal practitioner can uh, upskill themselves with is in how to uh, summarize and get to the gist of case law. And the reason for that is because, I mean, our, our courts do tend to pass down voluminous judgments, especially at Concourt and SEA level. Um, I mean, we, we can easily get judgments in excess of 120 pages you don't have all the time in the world to read over 120 pages each time you prepare for a case especially when citing a precedent right you just don't have that kind of time and nor does your candidate or your pupil for that matter so vital uh, we do have a dedicated lecture just on how to read and summarize case law fast uh, it's pretty much the same as what you've got here, but if you want to get out of the how to study series and just uh, empower yourself with that particular aspect of law, feel free to watch that video. I've given an a example uh, vid uh, uh, case that we are going to go through, which was handed down by the Constitutional Court. It is the Residence of Industry House versus the Minister of Police in 2021. Um, and uh, there's a reason for this is because it covers all the aspects that I'm uh, actually talking about uh, within this video. So you, the first thing you need to look at when confronted with a case, any case, which court heard whom? Very simple. Uh, that tells us a lot about the case already. Um, and remember, there's a huge difference between reading a 200-page judgment and one that is five pages, so you just don't have the time. So we're going to go through it now through the tricks of the trade. Right, there on um, this particular judgment is 96 pages. It's 222 paragraphs and including three different judicial views. Uh, those views ba basically being the majority, the consenting, the d concurring, and the dissenting judgments. Uh, seriously, guys, you don't have time to read through all of that. Uh, the neutral citation is usually given, especially on the Safley uh, 
issued judgments and these are usually the judgments of first instance when i say first instance safely generally gets all the court cases uh, judgments um, which it uploads to its uh, safely platform on um, the web and uh, thereafter, you know, the judgments start populating all the other uh, online judgment portals, uh, uh, such as LexisNexis and Jutas and other sources, criminal law reports, civil law reports, etc., etc. Okay, mm -hmm. so most of the CC and SEA judgments makes the citation easy they just give you the neutral citation it's almost like in your act where it says uh, when you cite this act cite it as follow cyber crimes act common 99 uh, 2020 um, so here that is how they would like us to cite this in general we would cite it by saying the residents of industry house 5 Davies Street and others um, versus uh, Minister of Police and others and then you go into the whole citation there so you see there's square brackets around 2021 that is the uh, baseline judgment when the judgment was actually handed down um, it differs from the actual case when the case arose which is there there's a, a reference for it in the, in the constitutional court the case arose in uh, 136 stroke 20 we don't have to quote that but you will see there's a lot of uh, safely judgments uh, in the citation that they actually put down that before the date. Now, the more information, the merrier in the um, citation rules. But don't make it overcomplicated. Uh, in the summary section here, you get judgments. So you see Mkhlanta, Judge Mkh Justice Mkhlanta wrote for the majority. The majority of the justices concurred. Uh, the concurring judgments agree with the court's decision, but they are generally arrived at differently. One or two more points may arise there, but generally you're wasting your time reading a concurring judgment at this point in your studies. Uh, and then, of course, you get the dissenting judgments. And here, our Concord uh, clerks have been so gracious to provide us with the paragraphs associated with those judgments. They don't always do that. So, coming back to what do we do when we're confronted with a case? You've just opened up this 300 page case. Which court's decision are we reading? Ah, we see we s immediately we're reading the Constitutional Court. That means this is a judgment you must take seriously into account because it is handed down by the highest court in our country. And it is handed down from the perspective that Constitution of South Africa is supreme. Okay, so CC 2021, very simple. This means the case is either appealed from the SEA, that's how it got into the, the Constitutional Court, or it's being heard on grounds of direct access in terms of alleged human rights infringements, or it concerns a constitutional matter. So, for example, an organ of state abused its power, or the High Court has declared an act or conduct of state organ as unconstitutional and the constitutional court is being asked to confirm it if, if it is indeed so. So I mean these are reasons why cases get into court and these are basically the grounds for cases getting into court. So we know it's one of those just by understanding that this is the constitutional court. If it came to the Supreme Court of Appeal it would be something else as well as the High Court, Magistrates Court etc. And then who are the main litigants? We're not too concerned with who the litigants are, but the litigants' um, status uh, and grounds of them approaching the court are very, um, uh, how can I say, legit uh, of, of interest to the case. It also tells a whole story. So here we've got applicants, which in general, if you have a look at through all the applicants, they're all residents of some other area of Joburg. And the respondents, all the bad guys, Minister of SAPS, Janisburg, Metro, Home Affairs, etc., etc., including uh, key functionaries. So you need to be answering uh, these two questions, and this will give you a very quick gist of what the challenge was a face. So how can we summarize what we, you know, we can think more or less, uh, have insight 
into what happened in this case. So it's a constitutional case, it's of grave concern. Uh, residents were being abused by uh, the respondents who possibly exceeded the bounds of their authority, so it's something to do with that vertical relationship in law. And uh, this is uh, what the Constitutional Court was approached for. So now the question arises is, okay, so what happened? And that is the second question that you need to answer in this uh, approaching case law is to find out what the case is and what in fact was decided. So these things usually accompany the relevant headings and as rocket science don't overcomplicate it. You will go page through or scroll through that uh, judgment of yours and you will see that there are different subheadings and headings which almost like the same like reading your textbook or your study guide you can browse through scan through it'll take you two three minutes and you have a general gist for what is going on in the case always read the order now here the order um, comes both in the front of uh, the judgment as well as at the end especially on safely judgments so it's not read uh, feasible to read the order twice just read it now because you're going to understand what the court decided right um, and there's very few orders that go over like one and a half pages so it's going to be worth your time to read the order just scan through it see what was won what was lost and um, then of course have a look in the header of the um, judgment to see what it says so there's the summary south africa police service constitutionality of section 137 order of constitutional no invalidity confirmed concerning the right to privacy constitutional damages awarded in an interdict okay so now that tells us a hell of a lot as well this case was about the constitutionality of section 137 of the south african police service act and um in the order, the Constitutional Court basically confirmed the High Court's order of invalidity. So it's something to do with the applicant's privacy rights being infringed and the respondent being interdicted. So now we're getting some more information. Before we've even read the case, we've got an accurate in, uh, summary of what is going on already. Then we ask, what was the order or decision of the court? Read the order. Most recent judgments included before and after, as I've already said this, and in this case, the impugned provision was severed and reworked to mean that the SAPS must only search for and seize illegal articles on persons within a cordoned off area, provided there's written authorization, according to order number two. Uh, no constitutional damages were able to be claimed, according to order number five, so we understand that. And the Metro, the Director General and Minister of Home Affairs can't raid to search and seize illegal items from residents without a court order or judge's warrant so these guys were bad boys that got slapped over the wrist by the court um, not to do it again and you know this is in the separation of powers remember when you're going to be doing constitutional law you're going to grapple with this uh, concept of separation of power so right now separation of powers um, it's uh, a, a key thing um, hold on one second I'm just quickly sorting out something on the audio there we go it's a key thing so for interest check how many uh, judges concurred in the majority judgment it will give you an indicator how divided the court is on any matter so here we're dealing with the cc remember there's 11 judges ju or not judges justices i mean these are highly important people in the picking order of court um and here you can see how many justices concurred with justice mukhlanta's uh, ju written judgment Okay, so it also gives you an indicated how divided the court is on an issue. So it'll point to how solid the matter was that was decided. All right, next thing you need to find what the legal question is and summarize the background of the case. So in our first few paragraphs in any judgment, um, if it doesn't give the subheading legal question raised, you will be able to find it very quickly. So you just scan through that and you will quickly see you know check for the words whether if should 
etc. Those kind of words show you what the legal question is. And there I've highlighted it in blue. And then I've gone ahead and gone through the background and I've just made some uh, summary uh, yellow highlights for significant things. So you remember how we studied the textbook and the study guide? Apply the same highlighting scheme to online judgments when you, when you read them. Um, it's going to be very easy to uh, find the gist if you do that. So we've already discovered that. Scan a few f first paragraphs. There are also sometimes sub-paragraphs or sub-legal uh, questions within sub-paragraphs of the judgment. Uh, you can go through each of those and there will be answers to each of those as you work your way through the judgment. But for now, I mean, we're not going to complicate things. Let's just keep it simple. Then you scan through the background section, which is what we've just done. Uh, and in so doing, I found that the police were immigration, with immigration officers had conducted a year-long search and seize campaign, mostly unauthorized against foreign residents around Johannesburg, resulting in missing or damaged personal possessions and property. So that gives a gist of what the case is about. You don't have to go into too much factual detail. I mean, if you really, if the legal question demands it, then of course you've got your fingers on the tip here. But we now have a grasp for why the applicants approached the court for what relief. And so you can infer immediately that here organs of state have abused their powers in conducting unauthorized searches and infringing people's rights. And now we can search the, the judgment for how the court reached its conclusions. That is the ratio and decidendi, or what we just simply call the ratio, how the court came to its conclusions. How to select which parts of the judgment to read? Now, this is something interesting. If you read everything in the judgment, you're going to be seriously wasting your time. We don't have time for that, especially in subjects like criminal law, constitutional law. The work is voluminous. You're going to kill yourself reading. Don't do it. Um, here you can see there are three separate, uh, on these two pages anyway, three separate uh, uh, background information sections that deal with each how... Uh, the facts unfolded in each of the communities affected. Um, do you think it's necessary to read the blah, blah, blah of what happened to people in all 11 residential areas? Of course not. It's the same blah, blah, blah. They just all joined in together in one action against the culprits. So we know that in general, the state victimized the voiceless. That's it's not okay. You as a future legal practitioner need to stand up for that because we are pushing a constitutional vision, a transformational agenda, right? And it doesn't matter what racial groups are involved. Don't get, go down that rabbit hole, guys. This is in general for everybody who's a South African and for people who are not, because we set a good example to the world as South Africans. So be guided by the headings in the judgment and skip the next number of paragraphs. And at this point, you can literally skip paragraph 6 to 18. Use your common sense. It's just blah, blah, blah for what we already know from what we've inferred. And uh, now you should scroll through the remaining judgment, only reading the headings and subheadings. You'll find headings generally coincide with each question raised. So think about each heading. Must I read this section? Headings about litigation, history, jurisdiction, issues. Uh, etc. are things that we already know from what you've inferred. So you don't need to read them. Okay, go ahead, knock yourself out, read them if you must. Having done that, we need to zoom in on what is relevant uh, for a case summary. The headings in each judgment are contrasted for illustrative purposes only, and you can determine which paragraphs to attend to without making notes like we've done here. So there I've given the headings laid out under the majority judgment, the concurring judgment as well as the dissenting judgment and you will see uh, the headings under the dissenting judgment where they uh, differ from you know our majority judgment I've gone ahead and I've gone and highlighted some things in yellow there those are what would be um, pertinent out of those headings to read uh, and you can maybe read that introduction background facts for Victor's Justice Victor's dissenting judgment. 
the dissenting judgment repeats most of the majority, but the interpreted, interpreted section 13.7 differently against the constitutional requirements. So I'll just read it for information, if you have time. It does not set precedent for further future cases, simply because precedent is set by the majority. We have a democratic uh, system, in fact. These paragraphs 6 to 30, uh, these parts of the judgment are just blah, blah, blah on steroids. Uh, read them at your own cost. We've been able to infer in two to three sentences what this is all about already. See how much time you've already saved. Uh, the next section of the judgments, paragraphs 33 to 61, these parts are what to skim read through. Read the first few words of every paragraph to see if it's worth completing. What is highlighted here should be read thoroughly as it relates obviously to the legal question before the court. And then paragraphs 37 to 60 need not be read too deeply as it's the court's rationale of coming to its decision. Nothing's going to change what the rule is, the precedent is that it's set. Um, because that's already been argued in these uh, paragraphs. And then paragraphs uh, 61 to 123 there, these parts of the judgment are already known from the order that was made. Remember, it's dealing with the remedy. Remedy is the order. Uh, you might want to briefly scan for if the judgment made any retrospective application, but most retrospective decisions are rejected on grounds of legality in any case. So approach that with caution. There is no need to reinvent the wheel. With the questions already answered in the order, we know an interdict was granted. We know the damage claim was reclaimed, uh, rather uh, rejected. Uh, the conclusion, always read the conclusion heading. It summarizes the matter. It motivates the order that was given. Costs, you don't need to bother reading those costs unless you're doing civil procedure where you learn different types of costs. But until you get there into practice, it means little to you right now. I just know who won. <laughs> yeah. And uh, again, the order, no need to reread the order and waste further time. You've already read it. Using this selection scheme, you will end up reading only 14 paragraphs. That is about four to five pages of a 222 paragraph, 96 page judgment. Hurrah. I'd rather read 14 pages than 96. Thank you. So it could take you two hours to read 96 pages and it's taken us five minutes to literally read 14 paragraphs whilst highlighting and making notes. If you get into this habit, guys, you are going to become legends. So a quick summary of the framework that I've applied here. Whilst reading, you can make a few notes called a case summary, which is up to you in the degree of detail you wish to add. So there we're starting off with, you ask yourself, which court? Who is litigating? What's in the case header? Check for the summary, the citation, etc. What did the court order? What is the legal question? What is the case background? Very brief, you don't need to go in depth there. I'm gonna show you now. Select and read the relevant headings and paragraphs and read all the conclusions in the, in the um, judgment. So here's a tip. Keep a separate journal, a Word, Excel, Notes, whatever tickles your toes, with all the case law summaries in alphabetical order. Make it a habit to keep it updated, and your future self will thank you. So apply read this reading framework to get to this case summary. Here's the case summary. Can you see? In the case of Residence First Minister of Police 2021 CC, the background, the police and immigration officers conducted a largely unauthorized year-long search and seize campaign against foreign residents living in Johannesburg, resulting in loss and damage to property. See, I haven't gone into too many facts and things. It's not too important. We want to get to the gist of the matter. Here's the legal question. The constitutionality of search and siege seizure procedures challenged in terms of Section 13.7 of the SAPS Act required authorization and operations to be held within a cordoned off area. The court ruled the High Court constitutional invalidity order was confirmed. So in other words, Section 13.7 is unconstitutional in the SAPS Act at that point in time. Um, and the police and Minister of Home Affairs are in future interdicted from con conducting unauthorized searches on grounds of dignity and privacy rights being upheld. Remember, we're dealing with the Constitutional Court. They're going to have a look through the Bill of Rights, uh, the lens of the Bill of Rights, 
as well as our constitution. And then the rationale is very simple, is that there was no safeguards for affected communities built into the SAP's provision to guarantee security of the person during a search and seizure operation. And we've summarized all of that from 14 paragraphs. Can you see how easy it is now to work with that short summary, that case summary there in the orange block, residence first minister of police in future? In future, I know if I'm dealing with a, an assignment or an exam, I can just refer quickly. What did the court rule? What was the legal question? What bri briefly happened? Etc. Brilliant, brilliant. Five to ten minutes for a 222 page uh, judgment. Come on, guys. This is going to make you guys legends. You can really fly through your cases in um, case law. Again, here's my contact details. Please do contact me. Um, we are uh, have a very good focus on service delivery to help you get through your studies and to see you succeed in law. We also do legal recruitment to help uh, place uh, you as a candidate or a future pupil in the employ of um, you know, some or other law firm. Uh, there are our other subjects that we offer. Please do um, go onto our website and sign up for whatever you are having a problem with. And of course, do those free booster courses. They can serve you only well both now and in your future career. Thank you for watching this video. Please watch the next one.